I'm going to be reading from that incredibly well-known minor prophet called Zechariah. I'm sure you digest him weekly, yes? You know it really well. Hands in the air if you know it really well. Oh, good. We're doing well so far. That's good. I'm actually coming down here because I feel a bit distant, all right? So just take this in just for a moment and let uh, me read this to you. Let me give you a bit of background about Zechariah. Zechariah is a minor prophet and he... Uh, uh, this was written to the people of Israel after they have returned from exile in Babylon. So they've gone back to the land of Judah and they have returned back from exile and they're meant to be rebuilding God's temple. And there's been some halts in it. But there has been, they're upon their return and they've been gone for a generation because of their sin, because of Israel's sin, God put them into exile and those who know it they'd done God warned them enough repent return back to me but they didn't so out they go by to the foreign Gentile land of the Babylons and then they come back so this is them returning back so just take that for a minute so imagine that you're not naturally born in the land to which your ancestors came from yeah just for a minute, you can take that. So don't forget, for, for the Israelites, the land, Jerusalem, Judah, the whole land that God gave them was immensely important to them. And therefore then, if you wasn't born in that land, you might feel a little bit slightly disassociated from your people, yes? You with me so far? Good, that's okay. So just take that for now. There are some of us actually who, you know, our parents come from a different country. We're born here and we have a connection with our parents back home, but not quite in the way that they do. You with me so far? Okay. Um, so I suppose I've got a great example. My, my nan was French. It's a quarter of me, as somebody put it to me yesterday, is French. We're not sure which quarter. Most certainly not the language, because I can't speak a word of it. But, you know, so there's a part of me that feels a little bit nicely connected with France, but I'm not French. So I feel a bit of a foreigner when I'm in France. So think about that for now as we come to this. So Zachariah is a prophet and he gets about eight visions from God about what is going on. And we're just going to read one of them. So are you ready? Then the angel showed me Jeshua, as in Joshua, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. The accuser, Satan, was there at the angel's right hand making accusations against Jeshua or Joshua. And the Lord said to Satan, I, the Lord, reject your accusations, Satan. Yes, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. This man is like a burning stick that has been snatched from the fire. Joshua's clothing was filthy as he stood there before the angel. So the angel said to the others standing there, take off his filthy clothes. And turning to Joshua, he said, See, I have taken away your sins, and now I'm giving you these fine new clothes. Who likes clothes? Who likes clothing? You know, who, who, who? Most of you are wearing it, so I'm assuming you like it unless you're part of the nudist society. You like clothing, yeah? Okay, I like clothing. Who likes choosing clothing? Who likes shopping? Now, some of us like shopping in a way. It's all right, mate. Don't worry. I'm not going to make nice shoes, by the way. There's a whole history of yes. <laughs> I went, no, no. So, um, I, I had to take 
uh, Adam down to Westway to exchange some shoes, and I was really hungry. I'd come into the office, gone swimming, come into the office, and I said, I need a quick McDonald's. So, mate, you go and exchange, and, and he said, I'll meet you at Mackie D's at Westway. Great, cheers, thanks very much. Uh, 15 minutes later, I'm thinking, where is he? So I then go and find him at Sports Direct. He's still faffing over the colour of the shoes. 45 minutes, and there's no exaggeration, 45 minutes later, after me convincing him that taupe, God doesn't want him to have taupe-coloured shoes, but the dark brown suits better where he lives and the type of trousers he wears. I phoned up Joy and said, Joy, if I ever complain about going shopping with you again, remind me of Adam. <laughs> anyway, so moving on from that. So I like clothing. Now, most of my clothing comes from charity shops. It's cheaper. You normally get better quality clothing for cheaper. So most of my clothing, not all, but most, you know. Um, not everything. The clerical shirts you can't buy in a charity shop. Um, but uh, most of my clothing comes, because I like it, because A, it's cheaper and it's better, and somebody else has worn them before. And you always stick them in the wash, and they look well bedded in, and they look good, yeah? You're all sitting there going, really? <laughs> huh? And it's environment friendly, thank you, my wife who works in a charity shop, and, and, and it's really good. Not my underwear, don't panic. <laughs> Do not worry. So... Let's, let's take that for a minute, that we all like buying clothing, yeah? Good, okay. So let's take this for a moment in this vision. Now, Satan is walking around accusing Israel, who in this vision, the high priest Joshua is both a real man, he really is a high priest at this point, it's not Joshua of Jericho, okay? This is a completely different Joshua. But... Satan is walking around accusing two things. He's accusing Jerusalem in this vision, who is represented by the high priest Joshua, of their sins, going up to God and constantly accusing Israel of their sins before God. Yeah? Also here is going on is the real man Joshua, who is the high priest now, but was born in Babylon separated from the land of Jerusalem. His grandfather and his father were high priests, but they were connected with Israel because that's where they were born. Joshua, this high priest, wasn't. So part of the accusation here and the reference to filthy clothing is, is that, well, you weren't born in Israel. So therefore, then, you're not really a proper high priest. And that's the sort of accusation that is going on that Satan is trying to put into the mind of God and also into the people and making them feel less than they are. So let's just take Joshua as the person, as the man. You ready? So Satan is accusing Joshua and telling Joshua, you're not really a proper high priest. You wasn't born in the land of Israel. So you've really got no real standing here. Who do you think you are? You're a nobody. God hasn't really anointed you to be high priest. You're nothing. Resonate any bells with anybody? What we've got happening here is, is then God saying to Satan, I reject your accusations. The people of Israel are mine. Most certainly here, Joshua is mine. And to prove it in this vision and to show it to Zechariah, what happened was God says, remove that filthy clothing. Filthy clothing, sorry, I need to put that down. My arm's killing me. Filthy clothing here represented sin. It represented sin. It represented also filthy clothing of the Gentiles. You were born in Gentile land, therefore you're wearing Gentile clothing, which in, to, to the Israelites and to sort of with, they see it in God's sight as that's, that's terrible. That's the worst thing you could be wearing. So do you see the, the imagery here so far? So God is saying, remove that filthy clothing. God is taking it away. So God is not only taking away the sin, but he's also taking away, the, I suppose, the, 
the citizenship, supposedly, the, the lack of authority. He's removing that, and he's putting on new clothing onto Joshua. Here you go, Joshua. You're now truly God's high priest. And a bit later on, he talks about putting on the turban of authority and all of that. We're not going into that. So you with me so far? So Joshua suddenly becomes new, doesn't he? And dressed finely in clothing that God has given him. No matter what Satan says, no matter maybe what the people might say, Joshua has been given new clothing by God, and therefore he stands in that new clothing. Yeah? So Ken is going to get baptized. Now, as you heard him say earlier on, he was baptized by the Jehovah's Witnesses, which is gracious in the fact that, quite rightly, there are some core messages of the Jehovah's Witness teaching. It's, you know, closely resembling, but there is a wave of it that's way off. They misalign the whole fact that Jesus is Lord and Messiah. So as such, Ken's... Sorry, Ken, just borrowing you from it because you're getting baptized. There you go. Ken's baptism that he had then and I'm going to say this respectfully, was actually filthy clothing. Because it wasn't right. So what's going to happen for Ken today, when he goes into that water and he goes down, that filthy clothing is going to be removed. And when he comes back up, he's going to come back up in new clothing that Jesus has given him. Amen? Okay. So that's what's going to happen in the spiritual. So here we go for the next thing. What about you today? What is God saying to you? What has Satan been accusing you of and been attacking your mind about saying, do you know something? You're not good enough. You're wearing dirty clothing. You're not right enough to come to God. You were born in the wrong country or you were not part of the right and countries, inverted commas, by the way, because the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So every country. Do you remember that song I had us playing? Do you remember that nice country and western song? This is God's country. So every country is God's country. Right, so. But you might be well accused thinking, I'm not good enough to come to God. Congratulations, no you're not. Nor am I. But because of God rebukes Satan's accusations against you, it's God through Jesus Christ who has removed your sins, so removed your dirty clothing and giving you new clothing. But it's up to you whether you want to put the new clothing on. Ken today is putting the new clothing on. Amen? So I came down here so I felt a bit more with you. Might be down to you today to decide to put the new clothing on. Allow God to say, that filthy clothing disappeared. That, that sin or sins, they are taken out in the name of Jesus. Here is the new clothing that God's giving you to say that you are my priest. Because we're all royal priests, amen? But that's down to you to to use what Marshall was saying earlier on, surrender and allow God to give you the new clothing. And I believe that's what God wants to say today. Jesus loves you. And he wants to give you new clothing. But it's up to you to surrender, to allow him to actually give you that new clothing. Like Adam had to surrender the idea of having taupe and go, for, I, I don't joke, but think about it. It, it was, after, I, think, I said, think, Adam, I think the Lord is saying, forget the taupe, because he couldn't find any taupe. Taupe is a color, by the way. T-A-U-P-E. Have brown. And he's wearing them today, aren't you? They're nice, aren't they? Aren't they lovely? They're nice and brand new. Now, they're not always going to remain brand new, but the clothing that God gives you will be brand new and continue to be brand new forever. Amen? So for you today might well be a time for you, and there will be a chance for response later after the baptism, chance for you maybe for you to respond to what God is saying by saying, I got brand new clothing for you that nobody else has worn. It hasn't come from a charity shop. It's come from the Heavenly Father saying, here, 
take becoming this new clothing? Bay it heads just for a moment, 30 seconds. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you're the greatest clothing retail executive ever because you've always wanted to give us new clothing that's come from you. Father, I want to pray for each of us here, whether we've been children of you for a long time or we're not even there yet. Help us, Lord, today to either recognize our new clothing we're always wearing or to accept the garment that you're trying to give us. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. In the name of Jesus, amen. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.